So you want to start an online business, but you don't know which one to get started with. And it's fair for you to feel that way because there's so many different ones out there. And, and you don't want to choose the wrong one. Some are best for this person, some are best for that type of person. So what we did is we looked at all the online business out there. We picked our five favorite ones that we truly think are the best ones for beginners to start. Each so, one that we know a fair deal about. And, and it's important to say that we're talking about the best online business for beginners, not the best in general. So there are a few that we uh, won't be talking about. For example, affiliate marketing, making and online courses. Those are ones that we have not included in the list because while they're great businesses, I don't think they're very good for beginners. No. You I feel need like a following and it's just extremely challenging to become successful with that as your first business. Yeah, there are better ones out there to get started with that are easier, just better for you, right? Yeah. Okay, now before we get into the top five, let's answer the question, what kind of online business should you begin with? Now everyone wants to get started with entrepreneurship and build this seven, eight, nine, ten figure business right out of the gate, but that's obviously not how this works. So what should your first business be? It needs to be a cookie cutter, kind of business model that has proven to have high success rates and is cash flow focused. So the business's pure purpose is to create cash flow for you, which you could then use in the future to create your seven, eight, nine, ten figure business. Like, but right now, as your first business, you gotta be focused on making money. You're not focused on changing the world. And like you said, you want something that's proven. And afterwards, you can move on to the thing that's gonna make you a billionaire if that's what you want. Yes. So this video is about the top five online businesses to begin. If you've never had an online business before, that is going to make you money, okay? It's about making money in the beginning. I don't care what anyone else says. You need money to survive and uh, build a bigger business after that. Yeah. So we have our top five. We're gonna start with number five and then move down to number one. Yes, yeah, so with each online business, we're gonna yeah break it down. Number one, what it is, how to make money with it, and then we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of each, and then finally, who is best suited for this online business. And then from there, you can decide if that's what you wanna get started with or something yes. else. So, right. shall we get into the list? Let's do this. I'll do this. Dude, what was that? I wasn't done talking. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay, let's move on to the list. This time we'll swipe up. Let's get right into it. So this top five is ordered from the fifth best to the number one best online business to begin as a beginner. So then the first one that we came up with is freelancing. Now that is probably the most unsexy online business there is. And also it is an online business. Mm -hmm. It might not seem like an online business, but what freelancing is, is essentially where you do random jobs for people on the internet. So it's, it's, it's a hybrid between an online business and a regular job. It's the closest thing there is to that. Um, so what kind of jobs can you do? Uh, it's random things like you could be a writer for people online, writing blog posts, a ghost writer for books. You could do web design. You can do photo and video editing. Any skills that you can offer anyone, you can, well, sell on the internet. Mm -hmm. And it could even be, like, I can guarantee everyone has something a lot of people think they, they, they have nothing don't, to offer. You, you got something that you can do well. Even something just like data entry, mm -hmm. where you're just plugging numbers into a spreadsheet. You could be a virtual assistant for someone on the internet. And how do you get gigs this way? You can either put up a job listing on Upwork, or you could go on Fiverr. These are two freelancing websites where freelancers can meet customers or uh, business owners looking for uh, online employees. Um, so that's what freelancing is. So what are some of the pros of freelancing? For one, you can work from home. It, it's, and this applies to all the online businesses we're going to talk about. But like with freelancing, there isn't like so many pros. So no. being able to work from home anywhere, all you need is internet connection. It's definitely a pro. Um, it's basically an online job you could do from home or anywhere. Yeah. So it is still basically working a job. That's yeah. why it's a mix. And then there's a super low barrier of entry where basically anyone can just do it. Go on Upwork, go on Fiverr, make a, a job posting, and then you can potentially find people to work for, right? It's super easy to get started. Also, you need absolutely no money to get started. You don't mm -hmm. need to invest maybe minor things in the equipment if you're if doing you a certain type of thing. Job. But um, to make a listing, don't need anything. You don't need to invest in anything. The number right. one pro about it is it requires like no balls to get into it. Yeah. Online business, it requires to... There's no risk. There's, there's no risk. There's no risk to get involved. It's like for people who are super skeptical, 
Hmm. Like, okay, I, I want to see if making money online is for me. I don't know if it is. Try out freelancing. Yeah. You'll see if you like it or not. Now, the cons of freelancing, it's quite a few. You can't scale it. No. And you got to bust your ass to make money, right? Anything beyond, you can't make more than $10,000 a month, which would be insane no. as a freelancer. Now, you can make $10,000 a month if you're people like that do it. an experienced web designer yeah. where you, you uh, charge like a... 5k to build a website in two weeks or something like yeah. that you do two of those in a month you made 10k yeah but you gotta work your ass off as a freelancer and there's yes. no like freedom passive income lifestyle no, all no, that no. Shit. there's nothing passive about it there's nothing freedom about it well then you could do it from anywhere that counts as freedom actually yeah. uh, but you're trading time for money and you can't scale this at all that's why this is a super uh low tier online business yeah that's why it's number five on the list. But it's for people who don't want to risk anything and just want to dabble and see if online business is for them. Freelancing is probably your best option to get started with, to yeah. be honest. Another con, it might be hard to get clients as well as a freelancer. You got to bust your ass for clients. That's what I'm saying. You got to hustle. Any of these online businesses, you got to bust your ass, basically. Yeah. None, right. none of them are easy. Our fourth favorite online business for beginners is a coaching slash consulting business. And what that really is, is that you're working one-on-one -on -one with another person um, and then teaching them or providing them some sort of value or information. Teaching them how to achieve their goals. So that could be anything like fitness consulting, where you consult them about how to get in better shape. You could be a diet slash nutrition consultant, teach someone how to eat healthier and lose weight. A dating consultant, teach someone how to pick up girls, have a better relationship. So like a relationship consultant, you could be a Facebook ads consulting, teaching someone how to become better at running Facebook ads, a business consultant, teaching someone how to scale their business. There's so many examples of this. There's probably a hundred different niches, a hundred different uh, coaches slash consultants that exist. There's no limit to what you can do with one-on-one -on -one consulting. If you can help someone achieve goals, then you can do this. Perhaps the biggest pro of starting a coaching slash consulting business is that you're working one-on-one -on -one and because of that, you can charge them a high amounts of, of money. You can charge them a lot right? of money. One-on-one -on -one coaching is extremely valuable. You could literally charge $500 to $1,000 or more per coaching session. session. Like That could be one to two hours. Mm -hmm. And you, if you just do one of those a week, that's $4,000 a month. Yeah. And then if you're making $4,000 a month with four different clients, you're making $16,000 a month. Yeah. That's a lot of money. And you also have barely any expenses because you're the only employee and you have like nothing else you need to pay for. Yeah. So the pros are you could charge a lot of money and you can make a lot of money because of that. So you can take this realistically up to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month without any expenses. Mm -hmm. Like that's pure profit because all you're doing is sharing knowledge, sharing wisdom, and coaching people to achieve their goals. Yeah. Um, now there are of course some cons to this. The major cons for me being you're still trading your time for money. You still got to bust your ass. You still got to bust your ass and you can't scale this infinitely. There's nothing automated about this. And then also another con about this is not everyone can become a coach or consultant. Like you need some true expertise that you can share with the world and share with other people and actually get the results. I'll be honest, a you, lot of people don't have anything to share like look, that. You, you can't bullshit and charge someone 5K for that. No, you can't. You have to actually be good at it. Yeah, you have to be an expert in something. Now, it could be something crazy. You could li It could literally be like a World of Warcraft consultant. I was just coach. about to say gaming. Gaming. Could. Like You can literally could. coach people in gaming how to become better at League of Legends, World of Warcraft. So if you think like, oh, all I did was play video games my whole life. You if you're a special that. talent at it, you can make a business at it. Like, True. no bullshit. It's true. No bullshit. Those are the real cons of it. You can't really scale it and not everyone has what it takes to become a consultant. But it's a real solid online business. Oh, absolutely. It absolutely is. Now, who is this online business best for? I believe it's best for people who have a true passion about something and love working one-on-one, -on -one, sharing their passion and uh, basically watching their clients get results. So people who generally care about other people and changing their life because like a lot of people don't realize that a lot of people have the ability to do that yeah and you have to know. enjoy the topic that you're teaching or yes. else it's just gonna suck exactly you definitely have to enjoy it and you have to enjoy working one-on-one -on -one. you have to be a good communicator um like if if you're someone who doesn't want to be that involved in an online business like that it's totally not for you yeah. now i do think this is not this is a business that is not for most people yeah it's not for me it's just not for me it's definitely not for me either it would have to be yeah uh, a real people person. Now let's move on to our third favorite online business. 
Number three is e-commerce. And e-commerce is honestly, it's a very simple business to understand. It's just selling products on a website, online. You really sell anything, whatever you want. And now the two main platforms that people do that on is on Shopify or on Amazon with Amazon FBA. You just make a store on the internet and you sell products on it. That, that's what e-com is in one sentence. Now, what's so great about e-com? There's one big thing that makes e-com so popular. It is easily by far the most popular online business to begin with right now. Now that creates one of the cons, but we'll get to that. The biggest pro is you can make dick shit loads of money with yes, e-com. You, you really can. Now we have multiple friends who have seven figure e-com stores, which is highly achievable it's you shouldn't expect it but there's a lot of people doing it mm -hmm. so you can make 50 100,000 dollars plus a month in profit with these e-com stores so the reason why an e-com business is so scalable is because you're not trading your time for money if you have the right setup system in place whether you sell 10 units in a day or a thousand units in a day it's generally the same process and amount of work for you if you do it right which is why you have people that are making six figures per month in profit from e-com stores yeah again so what makes it so attractive for people why it's so popular is because you can get explosive results i mean you could come in and make a hundred thousand dollars your first month it doesn't mean it's all profit it isn't going to be all profit but you can make 100k in sales first month just like that yeah okay uh, and people flash the lambos and all this got it from my drop there's seven store. figure dashboards uh yeah. that's really what makes it unique so it makes sense that's what everyone's gonna gonna be attracted to is the money i'm here to make money okay but that creates a lot of cons as well now these are the cons that no one talks about mm -hmm. okay let's start with the first one is like we were saying you can have a seven figure e-com store but you're making nowhere near seven figures that's just like the valuation of it now why are you not making that much money because you're investing so much into ads okay you can and inventory and well, inventory products. but primarily ads yeah well products as well uh, but you can make a hundred thousand dollars you could have spent ninety five thousand dollars in facebook ads to make that one hundred thousand yeah. dollars and you can even have this massive store that's losing money m months in a row because of just ad spend so to get into this and get fast results you need a lot of money saved up and ready to just blow on ads with no guarantee for return yeah. so it's a very risky it's a very very risky business to get into especially if you want to be that guy who just skills like that right in the beginning yeah truthfully i think 98 percent of people fail with e-com stores what do you think more than 98%. 99% whatever a massive amount because a lot of people get into it because of how flashy it is It's great and all that they um, were severely misled They yeah. thought that you go in you make shit. You get rich quick. Yeah, that's how it's marketed it as but it's not a, as easy as it sounds No, it's actually a lot more difficult than it sounds which leads on to the next con Which is a lot of people don't understand what they're getting themselves into now There's it's a real fucking business. You're, you need to have customer support. You need to work with your manufacturers and suppliers. You need to have your logistics set up right. You need to worry about shipping, all ad spend, all this crazy, crazy things uh, that is difficult for a beginner to nail the first time around. Yeah. Now, a beginner can get started with it, which is why it's on this list. But yeah, that's it's a high risk, high reward business. And it's the number three. It's a good option. Yeah. And then the final con about it, it's so popular, which means there's a lot of competition. There really is. Like, there's so much competition. But it does not mean you can't make money. Like, I'm not afraid of competition. There's also millions of different products you can sell. Exactly. And now the final con with starting an e-com business is that you need training from an expert. The thing is, like, it seems like such a simple business, which on the surface it is. You find a product, you put it on the internet, you run some ads, and you sell it. Like, okay, I'll figure it out on myself. Let me learn from my experiences. But that's not the case at all. You need to learn from an expert. So you got to spend the one, two, three thousand dollars on a proper course or mentorship from someone to learn the ins and outs and uh, learn from their mistakes so that you don't end up wasting twenty thousand dollars instead. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, you do need training because it's not as easy as it looks, which leads into the final point. Who is this kind of business for? It's for people who want to hit home runs. They basically want to get rich quick. They want their Lambo in year one. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're buying a Lambo in year one, even if you can't afford it, you're, you're going to be broke in year two. Okay. Because that's just not how finances work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
that's basically what there is to say about e-com. Our second favorite online business for beginners is starting a social media marketing agency, also known as SMMA. Now what that consists of is starting a marketing agency that provides services for other businesses, basically so they can scale their business, generate more leads, make more money. Now examples of this is you could run Facebook ads for another business. That's the big one. That's the most popular one. Uh, you can run Google, YouTube ads, you can create funnels for other businesses, you can grow their Instagram, you can create emails, set up email automation, email marketing. There's a lot of things you can do. All the things that uh, go into building a well-rounded business that can like make money on autopilot, that's what an SMMA agency is gonna do for other businesses. You have services that's gonna help them make more money and the great thing about it is you could charge a lot of money. So let's say you can make another business $20,000 extra a month. You can charge them $10,000 a month to make $20,000 extra and they're gonna keep on coming back. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna pay you $10,000 every month for a year straight. That client made you $120,000 yeah. in one year. And because you're an agency, you don't need to have the skill of the service that you're offering. You're gonna find someone to do that work you're for you. You're not a freelancer, you're no, an you're agency. Yeah. So you have other guys who do these different services for you, if you're smart, if you set it up the right way. And that's why as opposed to a freelancer or someone who is a coach or consultant, you're also not trading your time for money because you can take on many more uh, clients than you could if you were alone because you yeah. have employees. So you could be an agency that has 20 different, 20 different clients. And you have everyone else doing the work for you, all your employees. Paying you anywhere between $1,000 and $10,000 a month. So as you can see, this is a business model where you can make shitloads of money. I'll be honest, I think it's the one where you can like uh, make $10,000 a month profit as, within 30 days. You just need one $10,000 client, boom. He could, he would give you six-figure salary, yeah. just like that. So you can scale this really big and that's one of the great things about it. It's it could be a real cash cow of a business for you. you Got to remember these businesses that you're starting to begin with, they have to be cash flow focused. That's the most important thing is cash going into your pockets. Now on to the cons of having a social media marketing agency. There's a few that we should say. Something with such great, great pros is going to have cons to go along of with. Of course. It. So one, you need to have sales skills. Like I said, you don't need to have skills and the services you're providing, but you need to be able to convince clients to work with you. Yeah, you need to be, a close, be able to close them on why you should give me $10,000 to do this for yeah, you. Yeah, you gotta get on the phone and be able to convince them to work with so you. So you ever seen movies where people are cold calling others? That's what you'll be doing. You'll basically be cold calling businesses, people will be like, oh, just shut the fuck up. But you gotta close these people. You gotta be able to sell close-minded people on your service. And that's not easy. That's pushing a lot of people outside their comfort zone. And it, like, it's not one of those online businesses you can sit and do from your, your grandma's basement. Yeah. It isn't that at all. Now, another con is that it could be a relatively high stress business because you have a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. for these other businesses. Yeah. If you don't deliver um, the services or the results- They're that, dropping your ass. That you promise them, they're not gonna be happy. And like, that's just not easy to deal with. Yeah. And yeah, they'll drop you first month if you don't uh, produce results to them. Like you, promise or like yeah. you convince them you would yeah we have a lot of friends who have smma businesses as well and they talk about how like they they honestly don't enjoy it that much because it's stressful a lot of responsibility you can outsource it but you got to know what you're doing to be able to do that which leads into the next con is this is not something you can just pull out your ass and start you need to invest in training either a mentor or someone who has experience in this um but regardless it's a it's my second favorite online business for people to begin with. And like when people ask us, what should I get into? There's only one that beats a social media marketing agency in my eyes. Because if, if number one didn't exist, I w this is what I'd be doing. Mm -hmm. I would have had a business like this. Now onto what we believe to be the number one best online business for a beginner to start with no experience, no anything, is a publishing business. And if you aren't subscribed to our channel, there's a very high likelihood you've never even heard of a publishing business. Your mind might be blown. You've heard of all these other ones, but shit, number one is something I've never heard of. Damn. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is publishing? And what makes it better than e-com? Like all these that I always hear, that are always talked about. Yeah. Now first, what publishing is. Publishing is a pretty vague word if you don't know what it is, but it's book publishing. It's where you create, publish, and sell ebooks, print books, 
and audiobooks on the internet and you keep a percentage of the sales for yourself known as royalties. Now, what makes publishing so great? Let's get into a few of the pros. There's actually quite a number of pros. We'll round them off real quick. Number one is publishing is an ROI machine. Now, our entire channel is a publishing channel. If you want to learn more about why that is, like we can't sit here all day talking about publishing, but it's an ROI machine for two main reasons. The power of time, you you publish a book once and then you can make sales on that book for months and years down the line. And then the compounding effect. So you can have 10 books out there all making sales for months and years down the line. When you've published a book and it's been out there for three years, the ROI can get absolutely ridiculous. Like absolutely we've, ridiculous. we've only been publishing since 2016, but those books we published in 2016 still make us money in 2019. Yeah. Like what other business can do that? And we haven't had to spend a single thought or penny on that book since 2016. Yeah. Next thing is it creates so many income streams. Like I said, the compounding effect, the more books you have, the more income streams you'll have from those books, but each book can have up to five income streams in themselves. Now we've talked about that in different videos. I won't outline all of them in this video, but just know that's what separates it from all the others. Yeah. And publishing is the only online business that I truly believe provides real, legitimate, actual passive income. People act like e-com produces passive income. Like just because you worked yesterday to make the money next week does not mean, mean it was passive. People need to shut up about passive income because it almost doesn't exist. Publishing is the here, only though. shit that makes passive income. It's one of the only ones that I'm aware of. You got investments and all that, but never mind that. Next, publishing is not a mainstream business model mm -hmm. yet. I'm saying, I mean, it will, it will eventually at some point. Once people recognize the greatness of it. Yeah, but right now, there aren't thousands of people in it the way people are doing e-com and all these other things, which is one of the reasons why it's so great. Like when it comes to audiobooks, the in opportunity in is ridiculous right now. When it comes now. to audiobooks in particular, you can throw up most books and make good money on them. Next, you don't need any skills to start a publishing business. Uh, it's a very low stress business, unlike a social media marketing agency. There's tons of flexibility with it. You do everything on your own hours. You don't have clients, so you don't have to uh, set up meetings with them and move your schedule around. You have tons of flexibility. And we both truly believe that publishing is the easiest road to replacing your full-time income online. Yeah. Now I think a social media marketing agency is it an easier road to get to let's say $30,000 a month. Yeah. It's a shitload of money. Um, that's not so easy to do with publishing. Mm -hmm. Has it been done? Yes, you can do it. Yes. But if you just want to reach $5,000 a month in income to replace what you're making at your job, publishing is by far the best option if you yeah. ask me. Yeah. Now finally, let's talk about the cons of publishing. Number one is you need patience and that's what a lot of people don't have. A lot of people I have seen will get into publishing. They're not rich in the second month and then they get frustrated and then they walk out. Yeah. Okay. Because people have just been misled about how online business works. Just business as a whole works. That's not how it works, especially with the publishing. Their turnaround time to like have a book created and audiobook narrated and then making sales and then getting actually paid by Amazon and these different platforms that are selling your books for you will take 90 days, three to four months before you, you start seeing profit on your investment, which actually creates a pro in terms of it creates a higher barrier of entry because a lot of people won't have that patience. Yeah, that's also one reason. So it's only the serious patient people who are staying in publishing and we're the ones reaping all the benefits. Yeah, that's why people are turned off by it because they want the e-com thing making a shitload of money in the first month. Right. It's and not gonna have a publishing. It literally is impossible. I mean, you gotta have a whole book written. Yeah. And also, publishing will not make you a millionaire. Yeah. It will not make you a millionaire. That's also not what you should be focusing on as your first online business. Now, the final cons of publishing, one is that you do need money to invest upfront. Now, I want to say you don't need money. You can write books yourself, but I don't it's, suggest doing that. I suggest finding a professional to do that for you. It's so, best if you have money to invest upfront. So if you have one to $2,000 to start, boom, you're in a great position to um, get started fast with your publishing business. And then also... You need training. Like yeah. if you don't know how to do the whole publishing process the right way and actually make money with it, you're going to fail. Yeah. Right. You, you can't do it on your own. I, like the only ones that don't require training from this list of five, I would say is freelancing. Freelancing. Like you can watch a few YouTube videos about how to make like a, a job listing on Upwork and Fiverr and then you go from there. Everything else, you need training. You need the knowledge. Don't go into it blindly. Uh, and publishing is no exception for that. Now, who is publishing for? 
Publishing is for those who want the path of least resistance to building a big and life-changing business. The way it did for us, the way it's done for dozens and hundreds of other people that we know. Look, okay. that's how we're fucking here. We're in an apartment in Croatia because we travel all the time and all started from publishing. Because of the pros that we've mentioned before, the passiveness, the compounding effect, the power of time, the like you said and forget it. Uh, style of publishing it's one that is built on creating financial freedom for you in the future that's why you need patience but it's so like i believe everyone even people like who don't want to be full-time publishers should have a publishing portfolio yeah. just a, another income stream that can make them thousands of dollars a month recurring without having to put in any extra time in it so if you do want to learn more about it we do have a two hour long free training you can access it in the description or we'll put it up there somewhere around or once this video's video ends, you'll see the free training. Click on that to learn more about publishing. The least you can do for yourself is learn about Just it. Educate, educate yourself, yourself. educate hurt. your own time to learn about publishing. Okay. It's completely free, risk free. Check it out. And that's basically what it is. What it now is, let's then. end this video with the magic emoji for people who don't know what the magic emoji is. If you watch the video to the end, you hear the words I'm saying, spam the emoji in the comment section to let us know that you watched the full thing to the end. That emoji, this is a 20 something minute long video. So it's now it means a lot. Yeah. Now the emoji is the loaf of bread emoji inspired by that toaster. Just yeah. The toaster. Yeah. Inspired. I <laughs> Will be a loaf of bread emoji inspired by the bread you can make in online businesses. Ooh, that's good. I'm trying to make a connection. Okay. Yes. Comment, like, subscribe, spam that that toast emoji down below, and we'll see you in the next video.